Dog FPV. Today we're looking at the 1S Baby Nazgul Nano FPV drone. I'm super excited about this little guy. So you might ask, Slug, what good is it? No prop guards, so not great at flying indoors like a whoop. And if you're flying outdoors, you have other choices. For example, this toothpick build that I did. Um, also, you have the GEPRC um, Phantom that has a top mount battery. So where does this thing fit? And my answer to you is sometimes I want to fly whoop style acro without the limitations of ducks. Also, I want a top mount battery to get rid of the pendulum effect of a bottom mounted battery. And as far as the larger toothpicks, you know, sometimes I don't want to have the stress with flying larger toothpicks in a small area when I'm trying to do acro. Sometimes it's fun just to fly in my front yard, with, which is a smaller area, and I think this is the quad if that's what you're wanting to do. In the box, you get a set of spare props, the 35 millimeter uh, gem fans. Uh, you get uh, some extra M2 nuts and screws. You get a screwdriver, an Allen uh, wrench. You get the charger here. And uh, that's about it. Then you get uh, a USB cable for the charger. And then finally, here is the baby Nazgul Nano. So as far as specs, the wheelbase I was measuring is 63 millimeters by 38 millimeters, which makes it a squished X. Uh, the uh, all-in-one flight controller is the iFlight Sexx X F4 1S 5 amp um, with built-in D8 receiver. Um, also, it has a VTX that is uh, 40 channel and it's selectable from 25 or 50 milliwatts. Um, the weight is 26 grams without a battery, which matches up with what I was measuring. And with a 300 milliamp our recommended battery size, I was measuring 34 grams. The motors, you can get them into view here, are the Zing 0802 22,000 kV motors. And the propellers are the Gemfan 35 millimeter props. So for the camera, it's the Runcam Atom 800 TVL one third CMOS camera. The um, camera mount itself is fixed and it looks like it's about uh, 25 degrees would be my guess and uh, the connector on the back here is a ph2.0 with rolled pins which uh, not necessarily the greatest and then the of course again the battery is top mounted with this tpu mount and they again recommend a 300 milliamp hour 1s battery so this isn't a complete how to set up a new model this is really more of uh, just looking at the settings in the baby nazgul nano and uh, just reviewing the changes i did but one of the first things i like to do is to go ahead and uh, connect and go to the cli and do a diff space all and then that's goes and dumps your configuration, which is the factory settings. So then you want to go over and do a save to file. And then it'll come up with a pop up window and then just save that someplace. So the easiest way to bind this little quad is to go into the CLI and type in bind underscore RX space SPI since it's an SPI receiver. And, uh, go ahead and then put your radio into bind mode. And uh, that's the easiest way to get this thing bound to your transmitter. So the noise you're hearing in the background, I turned on a fan. I recommend, uh, since this thing is powered off the USB, um, it gets a little hot. So I would, uh, cause the VTX is running, I would go ahead and uh, direct a fan over it. So that's what I've done here. The next thing you always wanna do is calibrate the accelerometer because you will probably be flying uh, this little guy in angle mode. So just go to the setup and hit calibrate. 
and it'll go ahead and uh, you need to put the quad on a level surface to do that. So moving on to the configuration tab, uh, they do have the props uh, props out or reversed. Um, what's nice, they did set up a bi-directional D-shot. So this thing uh, looks like they put a tune on it. Uh, so uh, also they had the um, maximum arm angle set already to 180 degrees, which is nice. That way, if you get stuck in a tree, you can go ahead and arm it and blip the throttle to get it out of the, get it out of the tree, hopefully. Um, power and battery, I'm going to lower these. Um, I'm probably going to set this to 3.1. And then I'm going to, for minimum cell voltage, and I'm going to go ahead and ups the, well, I guess it's set at 4.4, which is fine. And I'm going to lower the warning cell voltage because you're going to get voltage drop across the PH2 connector, especially since they're rolled pins. So I'm going to knock that down to about 3.0 like that. So we'll save that to go to the modes. Arm is on aux one. Um, they do have the mode on aux two, but they only have angle mode um, enabled here, it looks like. So quickly going through my changes from the factory defaults, I went ahead and turned motor stop on when I'm in angle mode. I like uh, turning that on. Uh, so that's just a personal preference. I turned air mode off because I have that on a switch is another change. Uh, we already talked about uh, the changes I did on the power and battery. I did um, set up my modes on aux two. I have angle, horizon, and air mode or air mode acro. Um, as far as um, D-shot beacon, uh, for the motors, I put that on aux four as well as flip over on crash. So those are the modes I added. Um, as far as I do have a rate switch set up on aux three, which allows me to change my rate pro profile. As you can see here, these are my three rates. And then on the OSD, uh, just some minor changes there. So one last thing um, I'm going to do is go ahead and change the power to 50 milliwatts. And then another thing I uh, like doing is low power on disarm. Um, again, that's a personal preference, uh, just so it runs a little cooler when it's hot out. But of course, um, if you disarm it for some reason um, and you're a long ways away, um, you won't have a video feed, so that's the negative of doing it that way. So go ahead and save that. And that's all of the changes I made.
Let's wrap this review up on the Baby iFlight Nazgul Nano. The pros, the build quality is excellent and it has a very rugged little frame. Also, the camera protection is good. Uh, I did like the Runcam Atom uh, camera. It had good color and detail for an analog camera. I felt uh, that the tune was good. I was only getting a slight bit of prop wash. So you might be able to tune that out, but uh, I thought it, it flies really well in acro mode. Uh, the, the, fi the flight characteristics are quick and it's very nimble. And it does deliver on being better at acro than a tiny whoop. Um, also, it is small and no one's going to notice this little quad. So it's perfect for parks or you're not wanting to annoy your next door neighbor. They'll never notice this thing. Uh, so let's go over the cons. The camera angle, in my humble opinion, at 30 degrees is, is too steep. I think it should have been more like 15 degrees or uh, making it adjustable would have been a better option. Uh, because of this, I would not recommend this quad for a beginner pilot. Um, personally, I was looking for a slower flying acro quad uh, that flies better than a whoop um, outside doing acro. It does deliver on this as stated, but it's a little too fast when you just want to chill. The other Achilles heel is the uh, PH 2.0 rolled pin connector, and I plan on uh, swapping that out with either a uh, a beta FPV uh, BT 2.0 connector or a solid pin PH 2.0 connector. Uh, the flight times uh, are uh, not that great, uh, mainly because of the camera angle. You have to fly it a little fa faster and then again the connector. Expect about two and a half minutes of, of flight if you're doing uh, you know acro. If you uh, baby it, you can get about three minutes. I did order some 380 milliamp hour 1S batteries that are a little longer, so they should fit in the TPO holder, and so I should be able to get a little more flight time with that. Uh, lastly, uh, really more of a niggle, as I consider this more of a backyard flyer. Uh, the VTX, even at 50 milliwatts, does not go that far. I think it's because of where it's positioned way in the back here. Um, the uh, receiver, however, did quite well. I wasn't getting any uh, um, fail safes, um, even though it's an SPI receiver. So what I recommend this little guy. Uh, for a new pilot, I would not recommend this with the camera angle being at 30 degrees. Uh, flying it in angle mode um, isn't that enjoyable. Uh, with the uh, camera at that uh, steep of an angle, you're pretty much looking up in the sky unless you're flying really fast. Um, however, for a more experienced pilot who likes to fly fast, then yes. Someone who wants a 1S backyard ripper, I think it's a nano quad to consider. It does do better, as stated, at acro than a tiny whoop. So uh, do I have buyer's remorse? No, I think with a little help, which will be swapping out the connector and maybe changing out the camera mount to 15 degrees will make this a great little 1S nano acro flyer. Uh, I did start getting used to the camera angle after a few packs, so time will tell whether or not I will actually uh, replace it with a printed out TPU camera mount uh, to make it about 15 degrees. Uh, so with that, as always, thanks for watching my channel.